Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning for the Consolidated Demographic and Enrollment Verification Webinar. My name is Katie Williams, and I'm in the Division of Data Assessment and Research. Thank you so much for being here. I want to get started right now to be uh, respectful of everyone's time. To let you know right up front, this webinar is being recorded and we're going to publish it on the Aussie website. I'll show you the link later in the webinar. Uh, and we will also post the slide deck, so this will be available for your review. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type them into the question box and I will address them uh, periodically. Uh, I won't stop in the exact moment probably that I'm speaking, but we'll stop periodically throughout the webinar to address any questions you may have. Today we're going to be reviewing the, the, the process for the demographic and enrollment verification. We'll discuss how the data verified will be used, the instructions for downloading the data, uh, guidance for reviewing and updating data, uh, how to submit your data, how to handle if there are no-shows on your data file, how to use the LEA summary data provided for you, and then we'll go through a demonstration reviewing a data file. Finally, we'll talk about what Aussie is going to do to create the final data files once, the LEA, once all LEAs have submitted their, their, their verified data. And we'll wrap up discussing additional support and resources available for you. Okay, I heard my audio is cutting out. I'm going to rearrange myself a little bit and uh, please let me know if you're having trouble hearing me. So to give an overview of the verification process, the verification will run from May 16th through June 15th, 2015. 2016, excuse me. The goal of the verification is to obtain a single, complete, accurate, and valid demographic record for all students that can be used for multiple cross-sector reporting projects. The student population that will be verified will be all students who were enrolled during the 2015-16 school year, as well as any students being attributed to your LEAs 2012-13 through the 2015-16 ACGR cohorts that are currently undergoing verification. LEAs in this process are expected to verify all the pre-populated information that was filled in by Aussie, update any missing information where possible. Each LEA is responsible for ensuring that all student level data are accurate, complete, and valid. The data that is verified will be used for reporting purposes for multiple projects that include, but is not limited to, the 2015-16 equity reports, the 2015-16 next generation assessment reporting, such as PARC, MSAA, and the DC Science, the adjusted cohort graduation rate calculations, and the 15-16 charter PMF. Please note that this timeline is critical, the, the verification timeline is critical in order for timely reporting of PARC and for the PMF. The data verified will not be used to amend existing authoritative data files, such as the enrollment audit or previous year's ACGR calculations or previous year's equity report metric calculations. And with that, I'll pause and see if anyone has any questions that I can address.
Okay, seeing no questions, I'll jump right into the instructions. OSSEA has pre-populated the demographic information for all students based on data available in SLED, the State Longitudinal Education Data System, and SEDS, the Special Education Data System. LEAs now must download the data file from the Demographic and Enrollment Verification subfolder on the OSSEA Secure Upload site, upload.dc.gov. LEAs must then review and verify the accuracy of the pre-populated student and school level demographic and enrollment information. Correct and update the student level data where necessary. Complete any missing demographic data fields. And finally, once you've gone through all of the verification steps, upload the verified and completed file to the Aussie Secure Upload site in the same subfolder where you downloaded it, no later than the close of business on June 15, 2016. And please email me, Katie Williams, to confirm your submission. Question just came in, what is the universe of students who are inclu included in the pre-populated file? I'll go back to my previous slide. The student population includes all students enrolled at any point during the 2015-16 school year, as well as students being attributed to your LEA's cohort for the adjusted cohort verification currently taking place. Continuing on, to update a data field, replace the incorrect value in the cell that has the incorrect value with the correct value. All changes made in the spreadsheet must also be reflected in the source data systems. And what that means is that if you see on the spreadsheet that a student's date of birth is entered incorrectly, you have to fix the student's date of birth in the spreadsheet, and then you have to go back to the source system where that information was initially populated, your student information system, so your power school or your school force, and update the student's date of birth there as well to make sure that in the future, SLED will receive the correct date of birth for the student. To the second point, all data changes must align to the permitted values noted in the data dictionary of the guidance. There is a data dictionary included in the guidance that was published on the Aussie website, which I'll point you to in a little bit, and there's a data dictionary in the student data file. Make sure you're paying attention to what the permitted values are and are adhering to those when making changes to the data. A question just came in, when is the file pulled from SLED or SEDS? Good question. The data was accurate. The enrollment data was pulled as of May 3rd, so any student who was enrolled as of May 3rd should be reflected in the data file. And I guess I'll jump down to my third bullet here, my third bubble, which is adding students. If there are students who enrolled after May 3rd who are not represented in your file, please add them to the data file. You can add them by adding a new row and completing all applicable data fields that you're able to complete. And then jumping back, completing missing data. Missing data are identified with a value of unknown. All missing data, all, all fields marked unknown need to be updated. Please replace any unknowns with the correct values for that student. Question just came in. Let's say a scholar's name changed in December. Are we using values as of the current date or as of the start of the school year? We are using the, the most current information we have for the students. If a student's name changed and it's not reflected accurately in the data file, please do update the name listed with the correct name as you currently know it to be. Moving on, reviewing flagged data. There are three data fields in your, in your data file called date of birth flag, gender flag, and race ethnicity flag that identify instances in which a student's date of birth, race ethnicity, or gender differ from what historical data show for the student. 
a value of yes does not necessarily indicate an error in that field, but it's flagged for your review. So if you see any of the flagged fields marked yes, pay additional attention to what that field is saying. We see that something different in our historical data than what's being populated currently. And then finally, if you see a data field populated with the value NA, that means not applicable. These are instances in which a student exited prior to the 2015-16 school year, and all future demographic fields for that student are not applicable to your LEA for verification. These do not need to be updated or verified. However, if you see that an NA was entered in error, you can go ahead and correct that value as needed. No-shows. A no-show means that a student never arrived at your LEA or at the school to receive educational services. If a student is identified in your file who was never enrolled, put a yes for that student in the field called no-show indicator. This is a little bit tricky because uh, we need to make sure that the no-show data is valid. The reason the student is showing up in your file is because an enrollment record, a stage five enrollment record, was transferred from your student information system to SLED. That means a stage five enrollment record that the student should have arrived at the LEA, registered, and shown up to receive services. If, however, there was some anomaly, some uh, extraordinary circumstance that could not be uh, captured, and this is an error, you should identify the student as a no-show. Aussie is going to compare your no-show designation against other enrollment and attendance records. If your designation conflicts with uh, what we see in other uh, authoritative data files, Aussie will not accept this request. That means if a student has a present or any attendance records at the LEA, the student cannot be designated as a no-show. Additionally, students receiving special education services may not be identified as no-shows once the student has completed a Stage 4 enrollment. To read more about this, please uh, follow the guidance in Aussie's enroll Entry and Exit document published on the Aussie website, and it's also provided, the link to that document is also provided in the guidance uh, for this verification and in the student file in the data dictionary. Finally, all ACGR documentation requirements per the ACGR guidance must be submitted through the ACGR verification process. I'm going to go ahead and pause for questions again. Okay, seeing no questions, oh, I spoke too soon. Is there any way to print out this PowerPoint? Yes, this PowerPoint is going to be published on the Aussie website at a link I'll show you a little bit later, and you can um, print this and, and save it for your records and use it as you're going through the verification. The recorded webinar will also be published online, so you can listen to the webinar again if there's anything you wanna go back in here. A question came up about the logic of a student who was uh, registered but never showed up and, and how they're not able to count as a no-show. Uh, please read the entry and exit guidance, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to address those offline. This is something that is part of the DC code uh, and, and um, was implemented with the six stages of enrollment at the beginning of the 14-15 school year. So now going on to LEA summary data. To assist LEAs with the verification process, 
OSSI has provided a tab in the student level file that calculates some basic LEA summaries using the student level data. The aggregations are intended to provide a general sense of how the student level data rolls up to the LEA level. The aggregations do not reflect the reporting business rules for any specific reporting project. And so they're not going to reflect how the data will ultimately be reported for each project. This again is just a, 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 to give you a broad idea of how the data will be rolled up so you can flag any uh, blatant issues of errors of demographic data being invalid or incorrect in the file. LEAs will have an opportunity to validate the implementation of any business rules applied for major high-stakes publications, such as the equity reports and PMF. However, no appeals of the student-level demographic or enrollment records will be accepted after this verification window ends. So this is the time to ensure that you have the student-level demographic data accurate, and then at a later point, you'll be able to verify the business rules of how we're rolling up the student level data to the LEA level. The other thing I want to point out is in the LEA summary data tab, the, it is actually just the summary for your LEA. It does not have school specific information. However, if your LEA wishes to aggregate the data at the school level, you're welcome to slice the student level data and do that on your own. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a demo looking at the file, the demo file with training data, not real student data. And this mirrors what your student data file looks like, which if I didn't say it already, these are available now for your download from Aussie Secure uh, upload site. Access has been given to all heads of school in, LA, in Aussie's LEA contact list. And um, if the head of school wishes to disseminate permission to other representatives at the LEA. The LEA head of school needs to do that independent of Aussie. Aussie is only going to send the login credentials to the head of school. So looking at this training data with, again, fake student data, the first tab, there are four tabs across the bottom. The first tab provides an overview, instructions, and support resources and contact information should you need it. This is really a mirror of everything we've talked about today and what is also in the guidance document. There's also a data dictionary, like I mentioned, that lists each data field being verified, what the permitted values are for that data field, the definition of the data field, what the default value is in cases where it's applicable. For the first values, you can see it's not applicable. But for something like ELL, English Language Learner, if that's a blank, it will default to no, not an English Language Learner. And then, as I mentioned previously, the source system. So in cases um, where this is applicable, where the data are being fed from. So your student's date of birth is coming from your LEA student information system. Questions about these first two data tabs before we actually look at the data? Okay, great. So now looking at the student level data, all of the data fields from the data dictionary are here, and we're looking at training data again, and you can see this goes all the way across. The data have been pre-populated where possible for your LEA by Aussie using data sent to Aussie from your student information system or the special education data system. And then there's the LEA summary tab. Like I mentioned, the LEA summary data shows you how the student level data roll up for specific populations, including the student population enrolled as of the 15-16 school year, the 2015-16 registered park population, and any student who's part of the ACGR cohorts being verified. 
Finally, in column L, you'll see what the rate for your LEA was for these specific breakdowns as of the 2015-16 enrollment audit. And it specifies UPSFF only because this is just looking at students or calculating the, the rates for students who are enrolled and attending DC schools. So if I look at this, I see that, uh, let's see, 13.9% of my student population at this LEA, this fake LEA, was identified as Hispanic Latino as of the 2015-16 uh, enrollment audit. As of all students who were enrolled during the 15-16 school year, 20% of the student population was in was identified as Hispanic Latino in this preliminary data, whereas 19% of the student population from the park registrants were identified as Hispanic Latino. And then in the ACGR population, uh, 3 out of 15 or 20% are identified as Hispanic Latino. This is just provided to, to, to give you support uh, as you're reviewing your student level data. So if you see anything that seems suspicious, like the rates are not aligning across the different populations, or you see something that's way off from what you know to be true at your LEA, you should then go back to your student level data. So I'll use the example of the percent males. So as of the audit, 48.5% of, of the student population was identified as male. However, I see in my park population, 57% of the student population was identified as male. So if I want to hone in on that park population identified as male to see who those kids are, I would go to the student level tab and I would say, okay, here's my gender field. I want to look at just my males. And then I would go over to the far right to the source populations. And here I have my park registrants. So I want to filter for just my park registrants. And I see I have 12 students identified as male. However, two of them are actually flagged, meaning that doesn't this this gender identification doesn't align to the, the gender we have identified for this student historically by the LEA. So I'm going to look at who these students are as a preliminary review oh, well, this is interesting. I know, because I know my students, that Haley and Adrian are actually both females. So this value is incorrect in the data file. So I'm going to update the data to reflect that these students are both females. And then to see how this impacts your LEA summary, you would go back over to the LEA summary tab, and now you can see 47%, 47.6% of the population is now identified as male. And that's much more aligned to what I would expect based on what we were seeing as of the, the enrollment audit. Any questions about how the data, how to make changes in the data at the student level or how the, the data are rolling up to the LEA level or how to be able to use the LEA level tab to inform your review of the student level data. Great question. Question about the flags. Are you looking at historical data within the LEA only or across LEAs? So if a student transferred from another LEA and there's a discrepancy with gender, will he or she show up with a flag? Aussie is looking across LEAs for this information. So if we see for five years a student was identified as male and then they switch LEAs and now your LEA is identifying them as a female, we will flag that. Again, a flag does not necessarily indicate that there's an error in the data. It's just for heightened attention because of the change we're seeing over time.
Another good question. If we see a flag but the current information is correct, do we need to specifically indicate that the current information is correct? Or can we just leave it? If the field is flagged and the information is correct, you just leave it. You, no action is needed. Where is the park information population data being drawn? Is it from our student information system based on the business rules, or is there a separate data set? The park registration uh, information is taken from the Pearson Access Next system. It was taken as of the beginning of May. So all students who were registered to take a park assessment as of the beginning of May are included in this data file. Okay, seeing no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the student level tab and just want to show you a few more things. Like I mentioned, there are cases where a value is marked as unknown. So let me take off my park filter here. And now we can see, uh, I see a value of unknown here. So I would filter and I would look at my unknowns. If you see an unknown, it needs to be completed. So Addie Prince, let's say she is uh, Hispanic. I would go and look at my data dictionary and say, okay, how is Hispanic identified? Hispanic slash Latino. And then I would replace the value of unknown with the value Hispanic slash Latino. Similarly, let's say James Hunt is African American, black African American. I would pull the permitted value from the data dictionary and replace the unknown with the actual race ethnicity value for the student. At the end of this verification, you should, you should be submitting data that has no unknowns. Any further questions about the student data, which hopefully you have in front of you, your own data, and can see uh, what is being reported for your students? Good question. Do we need to flag or highlight changes or simply make them in the file? You just simply need to make them in the file. You don't need to highlight or flag anything. Aussie knows what was in the initial file we sent you, and we're going to compare that to what you submit, and that's how we'll know what changed. Just seeing another question. Why are some of the ELL registrations blank and others say no? If an ELL, this is a good question, if ELL is identified as no, that means we have a record for that student for that school year and the student is identified as not ELL. If it's blank, it means we don't have any information on that student for that school year. So, for instance, if we're looking at a kindergarten student, that student may not have been enrolled during the 13-14 school year. So we wouldn't have any information about their English language learning status at that point in time. I hope that clarifies the difference between a blank and a no, or yes. Another question, we're, we are a CEP school, so CEP stands for Community Eligible School Program. However, most of our students are listed as paid. If I change to CEP, do I lose data I potentially need later? No, if you are a CEP school, please do make sure that all of your students are identified as CEP. That's a permitted value for the farm status in 2015-16.
Great questions, everyone. I'm going to jump back to the PowerPoint presentation now. So after you're done reviewing, updating, and validating all the data, you'll submit the data, like I mentioned, to the Aussie upload site to the same subfolder that it was published in yesterday for download. Aussie is going to then combine all the LEA's verified data files and complete a review and validate the information, resolving any remaining discrepancies. Ultimately, the goal is for all students to have a single demographic record that can be used for all of the various reporting projects. Any changes that LEAs make to the data file that meet all the expectations that I've discussed here and that are laid out in the guidance document will be accepted and reflected in the final data set. If, however, two or more LEAs submit data for a student and that data conflict, Aussie will resolve the discrepancies using historical records in SLED and SEDS. For changes made to the data that cannot be accepted, as I mentioned the no-shows where we see attendance records for a student, Aussie will communicate that the change could not be accepted and explain the reason why the change could not be accepted in the final data set. In short, any values that are verified by your LEA that could not be, that were changed by Aussie or not accepted by Aussie will, uh, will, will show that we were not able, what we were not able to change and explain why we were not able to reflect that change in the final data set. I just want to flag here that really the goal, one of the main goals of this project is to streamline all of the verification efforts. So like I mentioned that we have a single demographic record for our students that we can use for all of our reporting projects and so that in those different reporting projects the students information is represented consistently so you don't have the student in um, park represented as african-american black and in acgr as white that across all of the different places where we're reporting information on the same student they're represented in the same way Aussie will deliver uh, a final copy of your student level data on June 27, 2015, 16, excuse me. At that point, the data will be considered final and authoritative. The files will be uploaded to the demographic and enrollment verification subfolder on the Aussie Secure Upload site. Any questions that you may have about how the final data file will be created? Okay. Moving into the last section of the webinar, the ongoing support that Aussie will be providing. First of all, uh, the guidance document and the template for verification are published on the Aussie website at the link here that you can see below. You can access this through the data program page. It's under, I think, the entry and exit guidance. Uh, by the end of this week, we'll also post the slide deck and the recorded webinar and send an email to all uh, LEA representatives, uh, data managers, assessment specialists, and heads of school, letting you know that these resources are available. In addition, Aussie's holding weekly office hours during the month when we're verifying the data from 1 to 2 p.m. to address any questions that come up as you're verifying the information. You can log on at any point during that hour at the link provided below or call in and um, join us and, and ask any questions you have as you're going through this. And then additionally, Aussie will continue to provide uh, phone outreach to LEA assessment POCs, data managers, and heads of school during the verification period to ensure that you're progressing through the verification and um, able to submit in time. Uh, by the 15th of June. I, I can't stress enough how critical meeting these deadlines is to ensuring that you receive your park data back in a timely manner and for the PMF reporting.
Additionally, OSSI um, can provide support for ensuring that the right people have access to the secure upload site. Each head of LEA has been granted access, like I said, but if you want to confirm who has access or request changes, you can contact Tracy Bourne. If you have general data inquiries about data errors you're seeing in SLED or uh, how to fix some data in your student information system that's not feeding properly to SLED, you can always submit a request for support to the Aussie support tool and that link is provided. If you have inquiries about the ACGR verification process or any students who are on your ACGR cohort, you can email Laura Marizzi. And then all other inquiries can be directed towards me, Katie Williams, and I'll make sure that um, they get answered or, or are directed to the right people who can ans answer the questions at Aussie. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm happy to take any remaining questions. If you don't have any more questions, you're welcome to hop off or feel free to stay on and I'll continue to read the questions aloud and answer them as they come in. Again, thanks everyone for your time and for your effort and cooperation throughout this verification process.